BIS, the Department for Business Innovation and Skills, the Learning Revolution, and Learning Leicestershire. Here to promote informal adult learning. Hello and welcome to this next instalment from Learning Leicestershire, which is all about computer hardware and types of computer. We've got the handout which you can download and print off. It goes through all the things that I talk about within this little tutorial. Number one, the computer's internal components. Number two, the computer's external bits. Three, the types of computer. Four, prices we can pay. And number five, where you can buy them from. So get that downloaded from the Leicester Village's website, print it off and then you can follow through the tutorial with me. Okay well let's start with number one, shoot back up to the top and that is the computer's internal components and it starts off with the CPU. I'm just going to minimize this down over to the bottom of the screen and show you this is a picture of a CPU and this is basically, if you, if you think of the CPU as the brain of the computer, it does all of the thinking. But it can only think about so many things at any one time. So we need other components in our computer, and this leads us on to the RAM. I'll just click on and show you a picture of the RAM. Oh, the CPU usually has a big fan on top of it to keep it cool. If you've ever looked inside your computer, the CPU will be under that big fan. So here is a picture of some RAM. And basically, if you think, think the, the CPU is the brain and it does all that thinking, well, the RAM gives it all these different slots to be able to do multiple tasks at any one time. So if you can imagine, the bigger the CPU, the faster we can think, the more RAM, the more we can think about at any one time. So that's why when you go into a shop, there's lots of RAM and lots of, lots of processing power. But also, we need somewhere to store all of our information that we work on our PC. So here I've got a picture of a hard disk. And as you can see, inside a hard disk, it really is just like a normal disk, like a CD or a DVD. Obviously it's made slightly differently and it can hold a lot more data. Other bits inside the computer, just to make you aware of them, not so important when you're looking at buying your first computer, the motherboard. Basically this holds the CPU. This is where the CPU would go on the motherboard the thinking part. You stick your RAM sticks down here. That allows the CPU to think about lots of things at any one time. And then also we've got the, the outputs and inputs on the motherboard there. Other parts of the computer include the disk drive and as we can see here that's probably a DVD drive because it allows you to play a DVD on your computer. They're the sort of standard components that you'll be, be needing on your computer, but there are others. I've got a few pictures here. We have got a sound card. So if you're really interested in doing lots of sound engineering, then you would probably want to get yourself an extra sound card because a standard computer will come with just some standard inputs and outputs, where this one, as you can see, has got loads of different inputs and outputs and lots of gold connections, so really good quality sound. Other ones are graphics cards as you can see here usually a computer will come with a standard graphics card which is good for maybe watching films doing your standard um, writing letters and going on Excel things like that but if you wanted to play pretty graphically intensive games then you would you know more than likely you'd need to get an extra graphics card unless you've got a good one already on your computer here we have a TV card and you can buy these to put onto your computer so you can plug an aerial into it or even your satellite cable and it allow your computer to maybe act like a set-top box to watch the TV and it can also work as a TV recording device as well. There's lots of different components we can plug into our computer. And here's another one. This will give us some more USB ports as you can see here. This is a card reader we can plug onto our computer and you'll see it you, lets you put all lots of different cards in there and it gives us some extra USB ports. So there's lots and lots of things that we can plug into our computer on the insides and on the outsides, but what's the standard specification? Well, nowadays we're looking at around maybe 2.5 to 3 gigahertz processors, and they're usually dual core, triple or quad. 
So if you can imagine, if you went out and bought a PC with a 2.8 gigahertz processor, that's pretty good, and it can do quite a lot of thinking. But if you get one that's a dual core, that means it's got two processors. So it can do twice as much thinking at exactly the same speed. Triple core and quad core, obviously you can imagine what that starts to do with the amount of thinking power you've got. RAM, I think you know between two and four gigabytes of RAM is excellent now, especially if we've got Windows 7, and Windows 7 can run really, really well on less than four gigabytes of RAM. And then hard disk drives, we're leaning towards the, the bigger disk drives now, but if you get a computer with a 250 gigabyte hard drive, that'll last you for ages before you need to go and get any, any other memory to stick onto it. Right, let's go on to part two. The computer's is external bits. Obviously we need some external bits on our computer to allow us to see what's going on. That's what the monitor does. You can have one or two monitors, it depends on your computer, and that lets the computer show us what's happening. We've got the keyboard and the mouse, and these are what we use to control the computer. Don't forget, we're controlling it, it's not controlling us. Also got speakers, they allow us to hear things. If we're using it as a media center, then the monitor will allow us to watch the DVD, and the speakers will allow us to hear it. Also, extra things that you can get for your computer, things like this here. It's called a tablet, and it allows us to draw um, straight to a, a drawing program on your computer. But here we have something that a lot of people get. Our printers and scanners, maybe it's a fax as well. It's an all-in-one printer scanner there. We may need a webcam. Okay, so now I've given you a brief overview of the internals and externals of a computer. We'll look at the different types of computer that you can expect to see on the high street. First one we've got here is a desktop PC. You've got your main unit here with your disk drives and all your gubbins inside. You've got your monitor to allow you to see what's going on. Keyboard and mouse and speakers usually come with the bundles that you can get in the shops nowadays. By far this is the easiest to upgrade. You can pop the side off and you can put an extra sound card in or a video card. If in the future you know you get a bit more advanced you want to do some video editing. Dead easy to upgrade and usually the cheapest of the bunch. Next we've got a laptop this is very similar to a desktop, as you can see, but it's been compacted down. Usually it's a little slower than a desktop, and um, but it comes with a battery. You can take it, it's mobile, got about two to three hours battery life in there, and still quite powerful. And next one, we've got a netbook. These have been designed for the new internet sort of revolution, and it allows us to take it out and about, connect to wireless networks anywhere in the, in the town, so we can go on the internet, it's, it's quite a powerful little machines, they allow us to do word editing and um, you know we can work on Excel and some lower processor intensive programs, so you couldn't use it to do video editing or anything like that. You can't really upgrade it, it comes as standard, all neatly compacted in a little shell. Okay, well prices of computers can vary, you can pick up cheap little netbooks for about £200, um, you can also get some really good deals on the Dell website, in fact I've got it down here, just have a quick look, here we go, you can get a pretty decent Dell desktop computer for £349, but it does depend on what you want the computer for. If you want it to be ultra portable, get yourself a little netbook. If you want a portable computer, but one that you still use at home for powerful pro thinking processors, then get yourself a laptop. Or if it's something that you may want to upgrade in the future, get yourself a desktop. But computers are cheap enough now that we can have maybe more than one in the household. And once you have decided how much you want to spend and what sort of computer you want, where do you buy it? I usually suggest to people that you go onto the internet and check out all the best deals that are available. And I always recommend to people Dell and another website called eBuyer because usually they are the cheapest and they offer really, really good customer support if anything ever goes wrong. But if you do go down the high street, make sure you research what you want before you go in there, know what you want, get recommendations from friends and family, and don't let the salesman push you into buying extra warranties and guarantees and upgrading your hard drive and your processor for things that you don't need. Go prepared and you'll come out with what you want. I hope this short tutorial has given you a good insight into your computer, your internals and externals, 
if you've got any questions, you want some advice on which computer to buy, just go on to the learning forums in Leicestershire Villages. There's a link on the um, PDF handout. Go into there, ask some questions, and you know someone will come back with some good advice for you. I've been Nathan Revel. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.